welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be an eyeshadow ranking video. I have been on quite the eyeshadow kick for the past year or so, and I've been doing a lot of eyeshadow palette reviews. And I do like to come back and just give my overall thoughts ranking a bunch of palettes that I've tried together. So my drawer was just overflowing. I'm still catching up on some eyeshadow palettes that I bought a couple of months ago that I haven't gotten around to reviewing yet, but it is time that I sat down and just gave my thoughts on some past palettes. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. I'll be ranking these palettes from my least favorite to my most favorite. And we're just gonna, we're gonna talk about some palettes in comparison to other palettes that have come out recently. So if that sounds good to you, if you like eyeshadow palette videos, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet, I would love it if you stuck around. But with all that, let's just get started with this ranking. All right, so like I said, my drawer was just overflowing my speed review drawer and it was time that I just gathered these up. I have 25 palettes to talk about, and some of these I think are going back to October since I've last done a speed reviews on palettes. So 25 palettes, 19 spots, there's quite a bit, so I'm gonna try not to talk too, too much. And I do try to use every palette around three to five times to get better insight on them before I include them on a ranking. I have them just up until December. So if there's a video that you've seen yet and it's not, the palette's not in this ranking, it's because I just, it's gonna be in the next one. I'm not ready to just review it just yet. As far as my ranking style goes, I just wanna give a little bit of insight and then I promise we'll get to the ranking but I'm ranking this based off of my heart, quite honestly, on how much I like the formula, how much I like the color story, how much I think that I'll actually get use out of the palette. There might be palettes that I love the formula, love the color story, but maybe they're just not as practical for me and that probably pushed it down. I'll give my reasoning for all of them, but you know, I'm not like an expert in eyeshadow formulas. I can just go off of what works for me and what works for my style. And now I think it's time to get into the ranking. So in the number 19 spot, I have two palettes. Some of these are gonna be combined, like I said, 25 palettes. And the bottom is gonna go to these two. So I purchased the entire Odin's Eye holiday collection, the launch from this year and the previous year because I wasn't really aware of Odin's Eye for 2022 holiday. So I'll link all the videos on every single one of these palettes down below in the description box, as well as all the makeup that I'm wearing. So check the description box. But these, when I was looking at the rest of the palettes, these are my least favorite out of that video. So I have the Hey Reindeer palette, which is from this holiday. And it looks like this. This was the worst formula out of the four that I found. And out of all of them, like this would be the one that I would declutter out of all 25 that I'm talking about. I really just did not enjoy this palette whatsoever. The Merry Christmas is there with it. The formula is better, but I could see myself living without this palette and that's really what it came out to. It's a little too, I don't know, it's a little too warm for me. You're going to see the other two palettes a little bit higher up, but this one I just, I didn't really love. It's not my favorite and I thought like they kind of go together. So that's my number 19. For number 18, I have all four of my Pat McGrath uh, quints. So this hurts my heart a little bit. It really does. But the truth is, these are just unnecessary in my collection. Formula is nice. I have nothing bad to say about the formula. I actually really enjoy this formula over her mothership formula. I think that the Shimmers are really creamy. They're not the Blitz Astral, you know, super sparkly shimmers, but they're very easy to work with shimmers. So I have Sunset Romance, and you can see like typical Pat McGrath coloring. That's another reason these are just lower down. I have Bordeaux Bliss, which this one is mostly shimmers. 
Then this one is Lunar Nightshade. I think this was the most popular for people with the blues because it's a little bit different than what we see from normal Pat McGrath. And then we have Bronze Ecstasy, which this one's probably my favorite, but also the most neutral. So, you know, these I don't regret purchasing. After this, like, I don't regret purchasing any of these. I wouldn't declutter them. However, like, I can't see myself getting the use out of these that I would want to, like the previous year's quince. I really enjoyed those quince, which is why I bought this. This was the only thing from Pat McGrath's holiday collection that I purchased. And like I said, I'm happy to have them. They were limited edition, but really, like, I know these are gonna kind of just sit in my drawers and just go unused in my collection. I'm not gonna get the use that I want to, which is why I ranked it at number 18. And then for 17, that's where the other two Odin's Eye palettes come in. I had to rank them not the same as the previous two, and I do like them a little bit more than the Pat McGrath, so that's why I split them up. The Snow Dream, is the one from this year and here's what it looks like and I really like this palette. I know that this year's holiday collection didn't get as much great feedback like the previous holiday collection and I can see why because the Hey Reindeer palette like really was awful but I liked this one. I like the lightness of it. I like the Christmassy vibe. I felt like it was really on theme and I liked the look that came out of it. Then the Christmas Eve palette is my favorite of the four. This was actually the palette that made me want to purchase the other palettes. I was instantly drawn to this color story even though I'm not much of a blue. I love like these taupey shades that you have with the blue and this isn't just like a seasonal palette for me. Sometimes, you know, like this, I'm really only gonna think about around Christmas time for a Christmas look. This is like a nice winter palette with a Christmas theme, and I like that. I found this formula to be the easiest to work with, and I see the most looks out of this palette. So these two I put in at number 17. Again, don't regret it. Happy that I have these in my collection. Wouldn't declutter them. But compared to some of the rest of the palettes we're going to talk about, they just, they didn't stand out. And moving on straight over to number 16. This is where it like kind of started to get tough for me. Like I had them all laid out on my floor. I'm shuffling around, moving them around, trying to decide. I originally started, you know, like bottom third, middle third, top third, and then I kind of ranked it in between there to get my ranking. And this one just kept falling lower and lower and lower compared to other ones. And this is where I say, you know, the ranking just comes from my heart because this is not, this is not a bad palette. You're going to hear me say that a lot. It's not a bad palette, but 16 goes to the Xenon palette. I, I like this palette and it's a great formula, but just like some of the other palettes, this is going to be my least reach for Natasha Denona palette. I can tell you that just right now. If I was someone who pulled in companion palettes often, like if I needed, oh, I need a white shade to go with this eyeshadow look, then I would get use out of this palette. But for me, I should have just gotten the mini Xenon and been happy with that. I don't own that palette because that would have been much easier as a companion palette than like this midi palette. It's just too big for me. I know I won't pull it in as a companion palette. I'll only pull it in when I want a very glam smoky eye. Now this palette is beautiful. I'm not saying that. Again, like I actually prefer the shimmers in this one to some of her other palettes. I think that the shimmers are really nice. This stellar shade, like she just has like a bunch of different types of shimmers in this palette. So overall, like well-rounded palette, just not a palette I'm going to reach for often. I know there was a little bit of debate on whether this was just a 50 Shades of Grey palette or if it actually had some color. I do see the color differences, especially, I believe I did five looks with this palette. Like I do see the blues, I do see the taupes, I do see the pinks. Um, I do wish it was a little bit more drastic of a, of a difference, but I do see like the differences between this palette. So 
it's ranked honestly lower just based off the usage I know it's not going to get. Now, number 15, moving right along, I have the ColourPop 1111 palette. This is ranked down there, you know, honestly, because it's just a boring palette. It is, I love my neutrals, I do. Like, I, I am the poster child of a neutral lover. However, like, I need, I need a little something more sometimes. And this is just, it, it, the formula didn't blow me away enough to make up for the neutralness of this palette. If the formula just was outstanding, it would have ranked higher, but because it's just your average ColourPop formula, it just is an average palette. And that's really all I have to say about it. I, I ranked it over some of the other ones because I'll use this more. I'll use the browns more than the Xenon. But after that, that's about it. I do wish I had gone with the Cloud 9. That's a little bit more of a cooler neutral palette, but that released after this one. I live in Europe. It's a little bit tougher for me to order from ColourPop because you have customs, you have fees, etc. It's not just placing, you know, a $35 order, getting free shipping and it comes to your house. Like it's kind of more of a an event and I like to order more than one thing when I'm ordering from them. So that's why I haven't picked up the Cloud 9 yet, but this is a nice one. I'm I'm glad like ColourPop and I we were we were kind of like in a slump. We were a little bit on a on a break for a while and this palette did kind of get me back into their good graces or they got back into my good graces. Let me just say that because the past few palettes I've tried from them, I was not enjoying the color story at all. And this one, they kind of got back up there with. So I'm at least happy with that part and I'll be buying from ColourPop again because we, we were on a break for a while. Moving straight along to the number 14 spot, I'm trying to make this quick because we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I have these two duos from Bobbi Brown. So they came out with three different versions of these for holiday. I don't think you can get them anymore. People like snatched these up and then they were just gone. They were hard to find. I was very confused about this launch and that's part of why it's at number 14. So I have, it's hard to remember, they don't have the names on them. They just have the names of the shadows. It's like Last Dance in Champagne Toast. And I got them mixed up in my video because like I said, it's not on the back of the palette. It's just the name of the shades. I'm gonna just show you the palettes. This is the more pinky one. And this is the more neutral brown one. I like that it has a matte and a shimmer. I like that they're duos. However, like it's ranked lower because it's a duo. Like there's not too much you can do with this palette. However, formula is great, easy to travel with. Love the look you can get. These shadows from Bobbi Brown are fantastic. I mean, they are superior shadow quality. I love them and I don't mind spending the money on these shadows. And the reason I picked them up is because I think they're like $40-ish a piece. And you could get both of like two shadows for, I think they were 60 and I got them on like a holiday discount. So, you know, I will continue to buy these types of shadows. I think it was a really great idea of Bobbi Brown instead of releasing them as a single to release like a quick little duo like this, like genius. And that's why they sold out so fast. And then people couldn't get their hands on them, which I think is just a shame. I hope they come out with them more in the future and have a little bit more accessibility because that kind of just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, especially because after they had been sold out for a while, like a while, I was still getting Instagram ads for these little duos and all the comments were like, they're sold out. So why is Bobbi Brown paying for ads on sold out products? Doesn't make sense to me. Anyways, nothing bad to say about this other than just like, it's a one trick pony. And when you see some of the other palettes I'm gonna talk about, like you can do better than that. I will, I will have like get my use out of these. Like absolutely love them both, even like as a quad, stunning. I did not go for the third one just because it was a little bit more warm tone than I wanted. It was very coppery and I just didn't want that, but highly recommend these palettes. If they come back or do other versions of these, I will probably continue to purchase them. 
Now that was my last combined ranking. The rest of these are all singles, I'm pretty sure. So now coming in at 13, this one breaks my heart because I really, really love this palette. We are now at the point where I would not, like you'd have to pry all these palettes out of my cold dead hands. Like I really, really enjoy all of these. This is purely just chance that these palettes are coming up against each other. Sometimes you just have like a batch of really amazing palettes and a batch of awful palettes that you're struggling to even put at number one because it still is not a great palette. But let's just talk about this one. For number 13, it is the Bella Beauté Bar Basic Witch Palette. This was my first time trying Bella Beauté Bar and I loved it. I think I did this for my holiday Halloween video and this is what this palette looks like. Like I said, my first time trying Bella Beauté Bar. Shimmers, stunning. Mattes, amazing. I really judge a indie palette by its mattes, quite honestly. We all know that indie shadows can do fantastic shimmers, but do their mattes also perform? And these mattes do. For being like purples, they performed so well. I loved all the looks that I got out of this palette. I don't remember how many I did, maybe three or so in that video. And every single look after that, I also loved. There's a lot of variety in here. There's still enough where like, if you want to keep it just a little bit more toned down, not so colorful, you could do that. So overall, like I'm, I'm very happy with this palette. I do plan on picking up more from Bella Beauté Bar. Again, living in Europe, sometimes it can be a little bit tougher, but I really want that Dead of Roses palette. That's on my list to get, and I will prioritize that pretty quickly because I'm not sure if it's limited edition or not. So this made me fall in love with that brand, and I will continue to purchase from them. I'm glad that they're finally doing smaller palettes because I wanted some of their bigger ones, but I just, I refuse to buy a palette that big. I just, I know that I won't use it based on the size, regardless of the quality. But this was really good. If you can still get your hands on it, definitely recommend it. And that was number 13. Number 12 was the other ColourPop palette that I purchased with the 1111. And that is the ColourPop Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon for Love and Justice palette. This one really surprised me. Now I know nothing about this franchise. Please don't come for me. Um, I grew up with three brothers and I was always outvoted and forced to watch, you know, Dragon Ball Z and m more of the, the boy shows. <laughs> so this is what this palette looks like. You know, it's just really pretty. I loved the color story. It's what made me kind of want to dip my toes back into ColourPop. And then I ended up picking up the 1111 with it just so I could have a little bit more um, in my purchase. And this is so pretty. Like you can do so much with it. You can have like some really soft, pretty pastel just looks. You can have like more neutral looks over here in this corner. I, I loved every single look that I had with this palette. It really impressed me. And this, this was the palette that got ColourPop back into my good graces. The 1111 was like a happy bonus, but I really enjoy this and for not knowing anything about the brand or the franchise, like very happy. I probably won't ever watch it to be honest, but I'm very happy with this palette. I think that they still have this available. I'm kind of curious. You'll have to let me know below just as a side note, cause I kind of want the Twilight palette, but I'm not like a Twilight lover. I just really like the color story. And it just seems like there's too many Twilight lovers like trying to get their hands on this palette that is just almost, it's not worth fighting for and paying five times the price for that palette. So I'm hoping that ColourPop will kind of get their production in check and they'll release it so more people can get their hands on it. And I might pick it up. Let me know your thoughts. Like if you've tried that palette, is it worth picking that palette up? Moving on though to number 11, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Quad in Fire Rose. I wanted this palette for so long. When it first came out, I remember everyone was raving about it and I went to buy it and it was already sold out. And I wasn't even like that late to the party. It just sold out extremely fast. And I had to tell myself not to buy it 
like on a resale site for double, triple the price because I knew the same thing happened with Pillow Talk and she said Pillow Talk was limited edition originally, like years ago, if you're new to Charlotte Tilbury. She said that that palette was never coming back and then it eventually did and I think we know where, where Pillow Talk is now. <laughs> That's no secret. So I just knew like deep, deep in my core that Fire Rose was gonna come back and it was worth holding out on and it did. I'm so happy. This is what this palette looks like. And you know, I, I put this in a video. I don't think I did like a dedicated video. I think I included it in maybe like a full face. And it's, it's pretty, it's cute. I don't regret getting it. I'm happy that I finally got my hands on it. Is it like the best quad in the world? No, Charlotte Tilbury definitely like at this point of my life is a little overhyped, not something that I covet as much as I did in the past, but it's still very pretty quad, probably my favorite quad out of all the ones that I own. I have maybe two or three, four, including this one. So I don't have very many and this one's my favorite. I love just these topper shades. I love that you have the one mat to really ground it and her mats are, are nice. They're nothing to write home about. It's a little bit expensive for what it is, but Charlotte Tilbury's finally doing more sales on her site. Before she used to do like nothing for Black Friday for anything. And now like I'm noticing that she has like affiliate codes and she's been doing more sales. So definitely wait to get this on sale, but it's a cute little quad. And you know, I ranked it in the middle because I like it a lot and I can see myself reaching for it. Are there formulas underneath this that are better than this formula? Yes, but because of color story, because of just the amount of times I'll reach for it, that's why I ranked it a little bit higher. Finally, in the top 10, we're, we're breezing through this. Hopefully you're still here, but number 10 only goes as number 10 because it's an all shimmer palette. And that's good and that's bad because I'm literally only knocking off points because it's all shimmer, but other than that, it's the perfect palette. It is the Glaminatrix Fairy Light Little Six Pan. This was Glaminatrix Holiday Palette, and as of the time that I'm filming, they have like very, very little left. This is limited edition. Recommend picking it up if you want it before it sells out. But other than that, like outside of this ranking, I would not rank it lower. I don't mind that it's not an all-encompassing palette, that it doesn't have mattes. This is what I want from an indie company for holiday. It's just in comparison to the others, like I have to pull in another palette. So that's why I have it still high, just not higher. And I love this. Like I said, this is what I want for holiday from every single indie company. I don't need the reds and the greens and the traditional just holiday color scheme. Like this is perfect for me. Quick, simple, easy, has like Glaminatrix, awesome, just amazing shimmer formula. They are fantastic and I have nothing bad to say about this. All the colors are different. There is kind of like a holographic color in here if I remember correctly. And I love this for just simple, easy eye looks. Like this is a good travel palette as well. If you're someone who just likes to throw in a matte and a shimmer, you don't have to bring a bunch of single shadows with you, a bunch of super shocks traveling. You can just bring this one palette and be done. I love it so much. Now, number nine might surprise you. Actually, number nine, number eight, but let's just start with number nine here, not get ahead of ourselves. This goes to the Linda Hallberg Smoke It Out palette. This was my first palette from Linda Hallberg and I loved this a lot. I really wanna get the rest of her nine little pan eyeshadow palettes. It's smaller than I was expecting, but let's be honest, I am never gonna finish, finish an eyeshadow pan. I am so light-handed, I can barely even hit pan in my eyeshadows. So I'm not complaining about the size. If you're heavy handed, go through shadow quickly. Like maybe that's a con for you, but for me, I don't. And I just think this is the perfect little palette. She, after I reviewed this palette, she did a buy one, get one free on her nine pans. And I almost cracked and got like four of them, but I held strong. I just, I needed to like stop spending money on myself for holiday, quite honestly, and, you know, maybe think about other people, but I really wanted to, and I'm, 
I'm hoping that tells me she'll do that sale again in the future and I will pick up more shadows from her. I I think that Linda Hallberg, because she's based in Europe, is a little bit swept under the rug and she deserves a lot of hype. She has like a very unique makeup artistry and I love all of her looks. They're not necessarily things I do in my everyday style, but I take a lot of inspiration from her. I love her style. And this is just a really nice neutral, but it has the green, it has something in it. It's not like the 1111 where like, yes, you can use different shades, but you're still kind of getting the same thing. Like this will get you a lot of different looks within this palette even though it's small and compact and neutral so that's why i ranked it so high and i'm gonna continue to just keep an eye out on linda hallberg cosmetics because i don't see a lot of people talking about them and that's that's quite the shame number eight is also just a surprising palette in that it's from a brand we don't hear about a lot honestly i was expecting this brand to go out of business years ago if i'm just being honest but it is the Laura Geller Wheel of Fortune palette. This palette is just so cute. And I am i don't think I'm the only one that thinks this. And the quality on top of it just being cute, the quality was very surprising. It was excellent. I love how you have like a gradient from light to dark. The mattes were fantastic. The shimmers, like, are they the most impactful indie shimmers? No, they're, they're your typical mainstream shimmers. But this was just like a good palette. And you wouldn't think that, but it really was. And I picked up some other things from Laura Geller that I really enjoyed as well. I kind of just want to continue to explore this brand after trying this palette. So very happy with this, you know, nothing bad to say. I think in comparison to the Linda Hallberg, it's a little bit bigger. So you just get a little bit more variety in the looks and you have a little bit more of these lighter tones, which just suits my skin tone better than the Linda Hallberg, which is why I ranked it up just a smidge above it. It was very close for these two, but I have no regrets. And on top of the theming, just being so nostalgic for me in particular, like the quality was also there. So you can't, there's not a lot of times where the quality and the collaboration, like both are really great. And this was one of those times. So just overall really happy that I finally picked up this palette and got around to it because I think that a lot of people actually missed out on it. I'm interested to see if Laura Geller brings this back because I think that they weren't expecting this to be as popular as it was. Number seven is now where we're getting into like, not just the, you know, you need to pull these out of my cold dead hands, but like actually I'll come back to life and just smack you if you try to take this palette away from me going forward. Like these are love, love, loves. Number seven, I have the Cosmic Brushes Gothic palette. I love everything about this palette. Purple is my favorite color. I love that it's a monochromatic palette without being too monochromatic. I just think back to the ColourPop nine pan days and those, while like it was unique at the time, we weren't really getting those types of palettes from brands. We've now like improved where like, I don't feel like I'm just getting a purple look. This is a purple palette. You're going to get a purple look. Yes. But like there are some things where like you could make them different purple looks. Plus you just get the, I mean, breathtaking shimmers that Cosmic Brushes has. I love the size of this. This was a new size for Cosmic Brushes. I hope they continue with this size because for me, it's perfect. I... You know, their other palettes, the Winter Wonderland, the Muse palette, those are teetering on too big for me. If they were any larger, I wouldn't purchase them just based off the size, just like the Bella Beauté bar, but they are just small enough where I accept it for the quality, but I hope they continue with this size in the future. I just thought this was such a cool twist on a holiday palette while still being year-round friendly. I love the theming. I mean, again, like these shimmers are amazing. These two here, like this is everything that I just want in life. I love both of them. Not the most purple, but they're just, they're the perfect shades, honestly. And I just, this palette is fantastic. And I think actually, you know, a lot of people who maybe didn't buy from Cosmic Brushes in the past, 
bought because of this palette. Like it's just, I love the theming. I love everything about this. You can't really beat their formula. Their mattes are fantastic. Again, just like I said earlier, in indie palettes, I really judge a palette, not just on the shimmers, but on the mattes. And the mattes are buildable and blendable. They're not just straight pigment right away where it's hard for someone to blend them out and you have to kind of be a little bit more skilled. I am not a skilled eyeshadow person and I need something that's easy to work with that I can just take my time with. And this gives me that. So very happy with this purchase. Let's now go into some mainstream palettes. I have from Huda Beauty, the Pretty Grunge palette for my number seven spot. And I don't purchase everything from Huda Beauty. I am very selective when it comes to the palettes that I buy from her. I know a lot of people buy everything and they love Huda Beauty. I really try to stick to the color stories that call to me. And I like this palette a lot. I'm trying to, you know, decide if I like this better than the Rose Quartz. And I think that I do. I was a little bit hesitant because it is a lot more of a darker palette, but I think you have enough in here to bring some lightness to some looks, to have some more, you know, daytime looks that aren't too dark and smoky and sultry. I think you can get a lot out of this palette despite what it looks like, you know, upon first impression, upon first glance. It really is like a versatile palette. You just have to really play around with it and make it work for you if you want something that's a little bit lighter. I think that's what stopped a lot of people from wanting to purchase this palette is thinking you could only get grungy looks out of it, but I think that the name's perfect. I think you can get pretty looks out of this, and I think you can get grungy looks out of this, and it is one of my favorite Huda Beauty palettes. It has the same just great formula that Huda's known for. I have no complaints about this. I'm glad that she, she really like tries to, it seems like to me, I'm only speculating, mix things up. She doesn't just come out with always warm tone palettes, but like there are neutral palettes. There, there's something for everyone that you can find with Huda Beauty and I like that. So I will continue to use this palette. It's something that I think that I'll reach for a lot, especially in like Shop My Stash or something like this. Like I'll make sure to pull this one out frequently. So that's why I ranked that one so high. And now we're in the top five. We're in the top five. I still have some mainstream. I kind of wanted to rank the number five higher, but I didn't. I went with my heart and this is gonna be number five. Again, still like these are all pretty neck and neck, but I'm giving number five to the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude. This is hands down my favorite Natasha Denona midi palette, just for the fact that the Color Story is a very usable everyday palette for me. So I decluttered the Bebo when I saw that this was coming out. I just like the saturation. I love the mutedness. Is that a word of this palette? I really, really enjoy this. I do see different tones. I can see this not working for people with a deeper complexion. I don't know for sure, but I could see it maybe looking a little too same, same if your skin tone's darker than mine. But for me, my skin tone, it works really well. This is the perfect neutral palette for me and I love it. The only downside to this is like, this is not a palette I would travel with, which is why I gave number four to the mini dream palette because this palette is again, like a perfect, just neutral palette that I would travel with. And it's not just one look. Like a lot of the times with her five pans, you can only get one or two looks out of this. Like you can get a variety of looks out of this. I like that this palette, we're skipping over, we're just going straight into number four, guys. Um, I like that this palette has multiple, multiple looks that you can do with this, especially like Natasha Denona is pretty good on her Instagram of giving just different looks with different palettes often, not just what her new release is all the time. And I like this. I like that this is like an extension of the My Dream palette. I actually don't own that palette. It's, I just decided that was not one for me and I'm trying to be a little bit more selective with my Natasha Denona. I'm trying. 
um, because I just thought that palette wouldn't fit me, especially like with the I Need a Nude. I'm glad that I skipped out on it. But this is just the perfect extension. I feel like I get everything that I need from the My Dream palette, but in mini form. And this is my favorite mini five pan from Natasha Denona, hands down. I will probably, I don't know yet, I'm going to be doing a declutter kind of collection video soon. I think in April, I'll be going through my collection, talking about it, maybe doing like a slight declutter. And I might declutter some of my five pan Natasha Denona's specifically the mini nude is on my mind now that I have this palette from Natasha Denona because this is this is going to be my go-to travel palette from Natasha Denona. I, I have nothing bad to say. Like I said, it's the saturation. It's how muted and soft the shades are. It's the neutralness of these shades. You know, we are kind of getting into an error. I feel like we're at the tippity top of just cool tone palettes and we're about to dip back into warm tones and because we were at like the top of the top for cool tones it was just starting to look very much the same very gray and there's a variety of coolness that's not just gray and I'm happy to see less of that and more of this so this is my number four now let's go into the top three Top three, I had to give to all indie. I just had to. So let's just start with number three. It is my favorite lethal palette to date. I was blown away from this palette. This is the Midnight Serenade palette. This is Lethal Cosmetics' first palette where they did like a actual palette. The shades don't come out. They're, they're in there. You can't mix it around or do anything like that. Lethal Cosmetics, I think, is known for mostly their singles and kind of build your own palettes and some of their palettes they've come out in the past you can mix around the shades this one you cannot this color story you're gonna notice a theme it's just it's like the darkness the depth but the desaturation of the tones that's what I love about this yes it's dark and smoky which is what ultimately put it at number three in comparison to the the other ones I'm going to talk about but that's the only thing I, you know, these four shades here, they are a little bit similar. I talked about that in my video, but there is some difference there. Could they have been replaced? Sure. I'm not that nitpicky. There are other palettes with shades much more similar to each other. The shimmers are fantastic. You have a variety of duo chromes. You have some multi chromes. You have some metallics. It's kind of, you know, a 50-50 split as far as mattes and shimmers. I always like to see just like an iridescent inner corner shade. I really enjoy this palette and it really surprised me because my previous palettes that I purchased from Lethal was the Wildflower and the Nightflower and those were purple palettes and I wasn't in love with those as much as I really wanted to be but this one like completely erased my thoughts on those palettes like they're okay I could live without them but now like this is hands down like without a question my favorite lethal palette I think it was so nicely done the only thing I I don't like about it is it doesn't have the name of the palette on it I have to just remember it or I have to keep the sleeve because it does say it on the sleeve and normally I just toss the sleeves because I'm tired of just like having extra things all the time but this one I do make an exception for and keep the sleeve just because I don't I don't trust my memory to like remember the name of this palette. Now number two I had to rank this one high. This one also just blew my mind on how much I loved this palette. It was my very first time trying this brand and it is from Simply Posh Cosmetics. This is the Cozy Cabin palette. I, I loved this palette. I don't know what it is about it. I think that I just liked the layout of this palette. Again, like the desaturation, I keep saying the same thing, but there is just like this specific tone to these mattes that I really enjoy where they're pigmented, they're color, but they're not like primary colors. They're not neons. They're not pastels. They're just, they're wearable colors in my opinion. I love that you can just go down the rows for one look. Super simple. That's what I did in my video. I just did a look with each single column there and I loved it. I loved every single look out of 
out of them, like all six. I love that you can like take the pans out if I wanted to. The theming is super cute, the cozy cabin. And I don't think this got the time on the internet that it needed to because I don't think you can purchase this palette anymore. And quickly after this launch, they came out with the Aurora Lights palette, I think. And everyone really liked that palette. Like it seems like it's a very nice palette, just that was not the color story that I was drawn into. And it seemed like this one just got forgotten about, which is a shame because it was such a good formula. If Simply Posh comes out with another color story that I enjoy, I will 100% be purchasing it because it was so easy to use and I loved, I loved everything about it. I mean, I ranked it number two. I was... It was one of those palettes where I was like, okay, I haven't tried the brand. It's been on my list to try. So let me give it a shot with this one. And it just like completely exceeded my expectations on an indie palette. So very happy with this one. And now we're finally in the number one spot. So number one was tough. I really just had to go with my heart. I had to go with the formula. I had to go with the color story. I had to go with the amount of times that I know that I'm gonna reach for it. So without any further ado, it goes to the Glaminatrix Rich Romantic palette. I love this palette. Clearly, I'm ranking it number one in a palette in 25 palettes that most of them I really enjoyed. This one's number one. Um, it was tough for me because my only hesitation is that there is like, there is more color than maybe I'm used to on a day to day, but there's enough in this palette where I can make it an everyday palette if I want to. And quite honestly, like Glaminatrix has one of my favorite shimmer formulas that just outranks all of these all of these shimmers. They're so, they're, they're not like a full on multi-chrome, but they're not a duo chrome. And what really makes them special, cause I don't need all the shifts, right? Like I wear glasses, you're not really gonna see all the shifts depending on like how I turn my head. It's like the indescribable sparkle that comes from these shimmers. And then the mattes just really complement the shimmers in the perfect way. I like the size of this palette. I like the direction that they're going with their palettes. With this size, the pans are a little bit smaller. I'm honestly perfectly fine with that. I, you know, decided that the Nearly Natural was like my number one Glaminatrix, but I think that this beats it because even though the Nearly Natural is more neutral, there's a little bit more you can do with it. When I'm traveling, like I don't just want to wear neutrals. I want to have the option to use color if I want to. Like I want a really good balance of neutrals with some color if I just want to like have some razzle dazzle someday. Like probably not. It's probably not going to happen. But like I want to give myself that option. And this does that. I could travel with this palette. I, I do travel a lot. I have traveled a lot in the past. And, you know, for me, I want something that gives me everything in one palette. I don't want to bring five palettes. And this does that. This gives me like some browns in here with like some really pretty light shimmers. It gives me color if I want. And like I said, these shimmers just, they speak for themselves. They are so beautiful. I... I love every single one of them. There's not one shade in here that I would do without. And that's what makes this palette number one. I I can't recommend this enough. Again, I'll have every single palette linked down below if you feel like picking them up. I know that they have affiliate links. I do not have one, but there are codes out there for Glaminatrix if you're interested in this palette. But that is ranking all 25 palettes that I've had in my speed reviews drawer for a while now. I can finally put them away where they belong and get some use out of them day in and day out. Because sometimes like that drawer, when it gets too full, I do forget about the palettes back there. And I'm excited now just going through all these to be like, okay, I can see more looks I can do with them. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Did you pick up any of these palettes? They're not really new anymore, but they were they're fairly new, so I would love to know if they're on your wish list, if you purchase them, which ones you prioritized over others, if there are some that just you wanted to try but you weren't sure, if it would be a palette for you. I'd love to hear all your thoughts and opinions on these palettes down below, but this is where I'm going to leave you all. I hope you're having a great one, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.